Hey, Redcon Raider here, and welcome back to episode 10. Today we're picking up where we left off last time, wading through the Necromancer's lair. Now, the Necromancer himself is already dead, but we're pushing our luck and seeing if we can eke a little more treasure out of this dungeon before we leave. Packs laden with loot are often low on supplies. Obviously, I've doused our torches, so we'll be getting a lot more treasure, but we're also going to be getting into some tougher fights. Fortunately, since our quest here is already complete, we should be able to retreat at any time if we need to. Honestly, I think the trickiest part is going to be finding room for all this treasure. That's a pretty tough fight, and it just got worse. Fortunately, most of our current heroes are pretty versatile. We just need to get Istvan back on the front line. There we go. Everyone can fight now. One down, three more to go. Grievous injury. Palpable fear. Well, we certainly could have lived without that. Oh, good. Roderick's back in position. We really need to take out those Arbalists, but we can't afford to have Bunny stop healing. Okay, two down. And that should be three. A death by inches. So close. Let's get these corpses out of the way. Success so clearly in view. Or is it merely a trick of the light? That was closer than I would have liked, but... Everyone survived, and they're still in halfway decent shape, too. Let's keep moving. Okay, this should be it. Never mind. We can probably still finish this fight pretty quickly, but being surprised definitely complicates things.
Roderick should be able to finish off the spider by himself, so we'll have Istvan heal instead. Alright then. More time for healing, I guess. Seize this momentum. Push on to the task's end. That was more complicated than it should have been, but still, in the grand scheme of things, it wasn't that bad. Just two more rooms to go. Secrets and wonders can be found in the most tenebrous corners of this place. Hey, look at that. Another tough fight, and we're surprised yet again. Thankfully, Rowan keeps hitting with those stun attacks. A momentary abatement. I guess we'll start with the brawler. We'll try to take him out before he gets in action. Well, so much for that. At least he didn't do much damage. Okay, we're fine. Everything's fine. Let's start working on the Defender. Uh, okay, Istvan, you're, you're okay. Let's just lock down their back line, and that'll give us a chance to toss out some more healing. There we go. That's a little better. Let's get these corpses out of the way. Very nice. Very nice. We could use more of that. As victories mount, so too will resistance. Whew. Had another tough fight under our belt. But that tenacity ring was well worth it. That's a very solid trinket. Now we just need to make room for the rest of this treasure, and then we can go check out that last room. Now let's get everyone back into marching order. Well, apparently, fountains are full of treasure. Good to know. Alright, let's move out, heroes.
Of course. Gnawing hunger sets in, turning the body against itself, weakening the mind. Of course we'd get hungry five feet from the end of the dungeon. And it's empty. I would have liked more treasure, but not dying is an acceptable consolation prize. Huh. Sculptor's tools. I've never seen that trinket before. I can't think of any uses for it off the top of my head, but maybe I'll have to look into it. Looks like Roderick just hit rank 3. That means he's going to have to sit things out for a while, until some of the other heroes can catch up with him. Let's go home. I grew increasingly restless while waiting for the others to return. Unable to sleep, I instead focused on puttering about the hamlet, meeting and greeting the latest batch of new arrivals. Most of them were just temporary, people who were curious enough to visit the hamlet, but not desperate enough to actually stay for long. There did seem to be a few exceptions, though. The first was a peculiar man, draped in robes, seals, and scripture. Ever the gracious host, I attempted to welcome him to the village, but he seemed to have little interest in speaking with me. He studied me intently, exchanging a few brusque pleasantries before abruptly excusing himself. It was a curious encounter, but thankfully some of the other newcomers were far more personable. Two women separated themselves from the rest of the thinning crowd, quickly seeking out my attention. The taller of the two, a powerful looking woman with red hair and a fiery temperament to match, loudly introduced herself as Ronwen. She proclaimed that both she and her companion were responding to my call for stout warriors and was quick to begin haggling over the matter of pay. They were an odd pair, Ronwen was clearly a fierce warrior from one of the distant northern tribes, well versed in the ways of blood and savagery, but her companion seemed far more reserved. She had barely spoken a word, but she clearly held herself with a military bearing and it was hard to miss the massive crossbow strapped across her back. When I asked her name, Ronwen was quick to interject, jokingly stating that her companion was sober. I'm not sure if that was a name or simply a statement, but either way it seemed to fit. They both seemed capable enough, and we had just finished expanding our barracks. I quickly worked out their terms of employment and invited them to make themselves at home. While I had been busy with our new visitors, Bunny and the others had returned. They had arrived with little fanfare, and by the time I was informed, they had already dispersed across the village. Istvan was already locked away in the sanitarium, undergoing some manner of medical treatment, but I managed to track Bunny and Rowan down at the abbey. They were quick to explain that their expedition had been a success. They had confronted and killed the necromancer, and had found something very strange in his lair. They were oddly evasive when I asked about their discovery, simply promising that I would have my answers soon. I would just need to be patient. Afterwards, they quickly excused themselves, leaving me to my confusion. As I left the abbey, I felt a chill run down my spine, and I soon realized that the robed man I had met earlier was watching me intently, his face grim and expressionless. I decided that perhaps it was best to trust my companion's judgment, at least for now. Days passed, and eventually that looming gargoyle of a man seemed to grow weary of his self-imposed vigil and vanished into the night. Once he was gone, things seemed to return to some semblance of normalcy, and soon it was time to discuss our next expedition. This time, it was Henrik who approached me with a proposal. He had taken a particular interest in the curse carried by the bloodthirsty insects that were infesting the estate. Given that I had funded an expedition to the Weald to gather samples about the strange mushroom creatures, Henrik now wanted to know if I would fund a similar expedition to the old courtyards to investigate the condition that had befallen some of our other recruits. I quickly agreed that this was an issue worth looking into. Henrik had already secured the assistance of the King's Rook, but given the dangers infesting that accursed swamp, they were going to need a proper armed escort. I quickly summoned our two newest recruits, Ronwin and Sober, and they agreed to tag along with the expedition to provide some extra muscle. I purchased the appropriate supplies from the caretaker and personally delivered them to the stagehouse where the others were waiting. 
They seemed well prepared for the journey ahead of them, but I still felt compelled to caution them against taking any unnecessary risks. Henrik was a smart and capable man, but his curiosity had gotten him in trouble in the past. If he wasn't careful, it would end up being the death of him. And welcome back. Here we are on our second adventure in the courtyards, and I can't help but notice the map is a bit more conventional this time around. Before we get too far into things, let's take a quick look at the heroes we're working with. Ronwin. King's Rook. Henrik the Mad. Sober. All right, let's get moving. Okay, we're in a fight already. Fortunately, it looks like a relatively small group. Let's take these guys out quick, before they can infect us. Not bad. Could have been better. Fiend falls, a faint hope blossoms. Bronwyn's getting a little beat up. There we go. Good work, Henrik. Destroyed. Okay, just one more. surges as the enemy crumbles. A trifling victory, but a victory nonetheless. So far so good. One fight down, no infections. Wealth beyond measure. Awarded to the brave and the foolhardy alike. Looks like things are relatively clear so far. Honestly, I'm kind of hoping we can get through with as few fights as possible. Whoops. I didn't, uh... Mechanical hazards possessed by evil intent. I didn't even see that trap. I mean, I saw it on the map, but I couldn't see a way to interact with it. I'll have to be more careful next time. Trinkets and baubles, paid for in blood. Ancient traps lie in wait, unsprung and thirsting for blood. Okay, we're surprised, but there's only one enemy. We should be able to finish this quickly. One damage? Really? Well struck. Their 
formation is broken. Maintain the offensive. Alright, that wasn't too bad. But I really wasn't expecting to run into blight damage out here. Next time, I'll have to make sure I bring some antidotes. We've got one hall fight ahead of us. And we've got a vampire beggar. We haven't run into this particular variety before, but I think what he wants is pretty obvious. Finding the stuff is only the first test. Now it must be carried home. Looks like that got us three trinkets. That seems like a fair trade. Of course, since I actually remembered to equip trinkets this time, we'll have to make room for them in our inventory. Actually, we're not really using Henrik for offense at the moment. We'll have him equip the defensive trinket. Oh, thank goodness. Something that won't turn us into vampires. Henrik is on point with those heals. Okay, let's take these things out. Another one falls. Press this advantage. Give them no quarter. The end approaches. The world's deadliest maggot. There we go. Back to the pit. I guess we'll just... No, wait. Citrine are the least valuable gems. We'll just leave that behind. That finishes the entire right half of the dungeon, but we haven't run into a single quest objective. I guess they're clustered up on the other side. Alright guys, just hold it together for four more rooms. There's a hive. Obviously we'll burn that. Apparently someone filled it with treasure. That's a weird decision, but I won't question it. Okay, this looks like another easier fight. Let's take these guys down quick and keep moving. Hmm. I really should have had Roderick shoot the supplicant. Oh well. Just a shame we don't have a plague doctor along. Annihilated. Hmm. 
another abomination cleansed from our lands. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. Yeah, next time we definitely need to bring along antidotes. There we go. One down, two to go. That actually gave us a pretty decent amount of blood, too. Hopefully this will be enough to keep our infected heroes fed for a while. A handsome reward for a task well performed. Okay, not too bad. Executed with impunity. Nice takedown. Henrik, you're on healing duty. Great, more blight. Roderick, I really need you to calm down a little. Be gone, fiend. Nice. Okay, we've got some extra time for healing. The wounds of war can be healed, but never hidden. I think we'll dump the holy water this time. I haven't seen any uses for it anyway. There goes the last of our food. And we're all out of bandages. Well, I won't try that again. Whoops, almost walked by that crate. fortune waiting to be spent okay we've got one more room to go and of course that's where the last objective is just a little further guys Oh, there's a throbbing cocoon. Ronwen can use that to get her stress under control. Packs laden with loot are 
often low on supplies. Hmm. I guess we can start dumping our supplies at this point. Oh, great. This is just an infection waiting to happen. Let's hit them hard and fast. Nicely done. That's one down already. Slowly. Gently. This is how a life is taken. Good. As long as they're attacking Roderick, they're not infecting anyone else. You have got to be. I just had to open my big mouth, didn't I? Alright, nothing I can do about it now. Let's finish the fight before it happens to anyone else. Um, nice. Eradicated. Please don't do that. Okay, okay. We're good. Foolish horrors. Brought low and driven into the mud. Well, on the bright side. Now Henrik can be the dedicated healer for future courtyard runs. We're done here. Let's go home. That's an awkward assortment of quirks, but I guess in a game like Darkest Dungeon, it can always be worse. We'll pick up here next time.